Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to a new chatty video. Yeah, we thought we'd actually record one today about something that we kind of have covered a little bit before, but people have actually asked us about, and that's actually um, travel anxiety. Uh, seems to be quite... Um, when we've mentioned it in either, for example, Instagram or any of our videos, we've had quite a few comments on people say they, they're glad they're not the only ones. And, and it then seems, it's nice to have it mentioned, isn't it? Yeah, that it's actually spoken about. So we thought we'd actually put a video together about sort of the uh, travel anxiety. And we're going to do this from our point of view about and, how yeah, it affects us. The things that we do to help or the things that trigger us. So... You guys may well be different. You may have other things that bother you. So we talk about different things, won't we? Yeah, and the idea behind this as well, the, the things that we do to try to help, because it's not so much talking about it, but it's also what we do to actually try and sort of, um, not say get combat over it, but it. combat yeah. it. Yeah, that's the best kind of thing to yeah, say. Yeah, it's things I think that we've found over the years that's helped. Um, but at the same time, everyone's different. Everyone has different things and finds different ways. So we would love to hear from you. Please leave your comments down below. Let us know what it is that bothers you and what you found to help because it may well be that something we do that doesn't help you but your comment then will help somebody else. Mm. So it'd be really nice if it's something we can all uh, sort of like work together on. Yeah, and also if you've just found our channel, welcome to our channel. Yeah, we are Aid and Lisa. And also please subscribe to the channel. I normally leave that right to the end and we forget at the start, but please subscribe to the channel if you don't already. And also click that notification bell as well and you'll be notified of any new videos. So yeah, that's that's kind of where we, we're at with today. And we're going to get started. We've, we've, made we've, a list. we've got a list. It's actually made me feel really anxious. <laughs> just, we just had a coffee and wrote it and it's made me feel really horrible. It's such a horrible feeling. Let's just start with that. If you don't suffer, you've never suffered, you are so lucky mm. because it's such a horrible feeling. And let's just say as well, it's not just travel. Many of us struggle with it in other areas yeah. of our lives. And I don't know about you, but sometimes mine crops up for no reason. Um, and I can go months and months without anything and then it can be and I don't know what it is and I, I've had it before haven't I where I'm waking up in the night I can't sleep I've just got that feeling and it just keeps staying with me and I don't know why mm. and it is just a horrible feeling but travel anxiety seems to be a real common one and for lots of different reasons yeah and I think we may also touch on on sometimes when we're on holiday we also experience uh, some sort of anxiety as well um, and so it could be that it may not be travel. Travel might be okay, but it yeah. could be when you're actually away. Some things can be very overwhelming. That's a good word as yeah. well, actually. One thing we will actually say to start with as well, and this is something you searched up um, mm. some almost some years ago because it was starting to really kind of bother you. Well, our youngest suffers as well, not just with travel, but generally as well. Um, and especially with the trips, I think this relates more mm. so, but it can be relatable to anything. So always think of this as well, that... Um, apparently the feelings or emotions of anxiety are very similar to excitement so with travel we're not saying people don't get anxious because I think you can kind of, you can tell the difference between yeah. the two but I think it probably is also a mix so it's a mix of maybe anxiety and excitement I mean when you're going on holiday you're doing something you want to do <laughs> you you want to go on holiday well I hope you do anyway and you've had that big build up to it as well and we find it like and since reading that online it's really helped me because I've, I've always woken up in the premiere inn about to go away and it's I always wake up well before the alarm yeah. and I've got that feeling and I always used to feel oh, I'm so anxious but, but it now could be excitement. I know That's it's excitement as well and it's like that Christmas day feeling yeah. and I try and focus on I'm really excited that's why I've woken up really early um, rather than thinking oh I've woken up so early I'm so anxious I try and think of it in a positive way should we get started with where we where we kind of had our notes uh, and I think basically the first thing we're going to say is leading up to the trip we're going to start and work our way forward to actually being in the parks we're gonna do it step by step yeah so for example leading up to the trip now this for us can sometimes start weeks before a trip can't it if not longer than before that i think with both of us working um well i know we're not the only people that work but with <laughs> you obviously work for yourself so you have a lot of planning to do you obviously work long hours as it is but you have to kind of plan for being away i i start my build up to going away three months beforehand 
Um, so I have my own business and I have to get everything scheduled so that everything kind of still functions whilst I'm away. So I'm almost like doing, if we're away for two weeks, I try and do a lot of the work the week before and the week after. So I'm doing like four yeah. work, four weeks worth of work. So it's being organized. And I think with me, I work, I work for a, a big, uh, big company, um, but I still need to get my work organized. So again, on the flip side of Lisa, I don't work for myself. I'm not self-employed, but I still need to make sure my work is being done and I manage that or is being managed whilst I'm away. I've got a team that obviously I hand over to whilst I'm away, I'm away but it is still trying to get that done. And I really do try to plan that in advance, but there's always surprises. <laughs> but I think all you can do is do what you can, because I think you can't sort of do everything. And as long as you're prepared and planned, I think that's all you can do. I think other people probably will relate to that going away. It seems to always get busy and busier, literally, as you go away. And it seems to be it's getting more and more. Uh, and I think that then doesn't help. I think for me, that's my main cause of my it sort of anxiety. Definitely leading up to Leading up to it is, is very kind of almost stressful as well. And this is when it helps for us just being super, super organised. So many people that have a job that they can just finish and go on holiday. I am so envious of you, by the way. <laughs> they don't understand us. And like for us, packing three to four weeks before we go away, it's not because we're crazy and we're overly excited and we want to get it done. It's because we know we're going to be crazy busy with work the week before we go away, two weeks before we go away. So for us, anything that we can do beforehand leading up to the trip helps. So we do pack, I mean, we're, we're not packed with cases locked, but we have what we can in the cases, yeah. crossed off our list. Toiletries, we know what clothes we are gonna want to take. and We try and organize what we can. Um, and I think this is kind of probably a similar pattern to other, other points we're gonna come to the planning and preparation mm -hmm. i think we, that can be applied to a lot of things in life can't yeah. it the planning and pre preparation is trying to avoid things that might cause you either stress or anxiety closer to the day uh, is making sure i guess also you've got things like i mean this sounds really basic but your passports in day you've done your esters you've done all your other you've booked everything you paid for everything so again, that also is another factor that could possibly bother people. I'm just going to write down the word Esther because I've just remembered we got an email to say ours has expired and I hadn't <laughs> realised. <laughs> Esther, thank you for that. That would That's have been right. a nasty surprise in a few so, months. So I think, I think basically as much as you can plan, and again, everyone's circumstances are different. It could be you are uh, travelling on your own. It could be you're travelling as a family could be a large group that's going. So every kind of trip and every holiday could be different. Yeah, that's true. I think also something else we were saying as well is try and find out what triggers you the most. So like we've said, for us, the lead up to the trip is really stressful. So we know that by getting ready early in tiny stages, little steps really helps us. And everything we've done, it's like a massive thing ticked off. But it could be for you something completely different. Yep. But try and find out what it is and then maybe focus on that. I think breaking things down and actually working out or saying what what is the worst that actually could happen so for example we have to take a lot of stuff with us in our hand luggage because we're videoing um, obviously batteries chargers uh, laptop um, you name it we have probably got everything that I, and also that you can work as well i was well. going to say i work when we're away as well but also if for example we happen to forget to take a charger or a battery we're going to somewhere where we should mm -hmm. and easily be able to pick up another one we've have had things happen before i lost the um like the little windshield for the yeah, camera on terror of terror but and so for a couple of days this was um a couple of trips ago it sounded really bad when i was videoing vlogging but we managed to like you say we managed to order one from amazon delivered to the resort and it was done yeah so you just work out exactly what's the worst that could happen if that was, say, forgotten. Of course, your passports, yeah, that's a different case kind of thing. That's but not so good. <laughs> if you've got a favourite drinks bottle you want to take on holiday and you've forgotten it, or like our nephew actually put it into the bin. Yeah, at security. They were asked to empty bottles of bottles of water and he had actually a proper one that was he like... a nice one. Nice one, and he actually, rather than just empty it, because you can take those through now as well, and that's something that, that you yeah, actually empty. empty a lot. But you can get another one of those out there. So I think it, it's a case of like break things down, actually compartmentalize things. 
because when you look at a whole big everything, it does seem really massive and mm, unmanageable. Very overwhelming. Put it into manageable chunks. So right, okay, we said about leading up to that. We've we spoke about the uh, what sets you off. I was going to say, down. for me, it's lists. Lists are so mm. important because I feel like my head is so busy and you lay in bed and then you remember something else. Keep your lists. Um, I have a constant list now. Well, that I sort of, I always keep mine in like notebooks. You've probably seen them in other videos before. So then I can transfer it over and start new lists for when we go away in the next holiday. And then not only do I have like packing lists, lists for when we're away, um, you know, of things that we maybe even like shopping lists we do, our first day shopping list. I, I do like a list. Um, and then <laughs> and then I will have a list like two weeks before, a week before, and then I start to break it down nearer the time. So again, I don't want to be doing everything on the last and, couple of and days. And it's not just obviously stuff for holiday, it's in things to prepare to, to go away as well. So That's what I was going to say. So like day three, I might then strip out the fridge and give that a really good clean and I know that's done yeah. and I try and just do little jobs every now and then so again it's not so overwhelming I know I'm going to be working up till the moment we leave the house so by doing bits and pieces here and there yeah. it really helps and again look like when we at the start we said this is what works for us um, and one of the big things for us for example we have got everything done we're all packed we're all ready to go and we're ready to go to the airport we if you've watched our vlogs will know that we will generally um, stay overnight at an airport um, generally it's been the premier inn we have stayed other places as well but that for us really alleviates um, one big um, factor uh, we are only half from what we are only half an hour away from Heathrow but even if our flight was say 11 o'clock I know we don't have to leave that early, but we both know from experience, you used to work at Heathrow, and I've obviously been to Heathrow a fair number of times as well. Traffic around and going to Heathrow can be very hit and miss. We can get there in half an hour, or it could take an hour, it's taken two hours, three hours. hours, before. Three hours. <laughs> so, staying the night before is a case of we are there. So we're eliminating that one factor there. We've only done it once, well, we? We had a New York trip, didn't we? And we got picked up at six o'clock in the morning. And luckily, everything went fine. We were there, and we were there really early. Yeah. Uh, that also adds another point, I think you said later on, with everything, give yourself plenty of time. Definitely. So, for example, if you are travelling up on the day, um, give yourself plenty of time. You're always better being there two hours early or an hour early than being that time late. And that's obvious to say. But again, that's peace of mind. Um, but actually saying that, it's, I know it makes sense, but like our daughter, she's exactly the same as us, likes to leave loads of time. Twice she's gone away with friends that have left things to the last minute and twice they've nearly missed their flights. And that's traveling with people that are just so chilled, they don't care. Well, I wouldn't say chilled, I think they're... No, they are, because they think that the plane's gonna wait for them. Yeah, well, that, that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. That's not chilled, it's almost an ignorance, mm. isn't it? But she was mortified both times. First time... I wouldn't say that's been chilled, that's actually she been... She was the last person on the flight and they were making announcements, but her friend really wanted her Starbucks. And the most recent time, um, thankfully, their flight was delayed because they wouldn't have made it. And it's just, I don't know why people do it to mm. themselves. I really don't. But again, what a horrible feeling to mm. have, thinking you you could potentially miss your flight. Um, so I think that kind of covers in regards to sort of breaking each section down. Again, like if we're at the airport then, if we know we're there and it's in the afternoon, late afternoon, we've got everything. Also, I know we're quite lucky because we are only uh, half an hour away. If there is something... Mm. we can always go back for it and again i know this is our our situation where we are if you're about three hours away <laughs> it's not so easy. it's probably not so easy somebody All... could meet you halfway something that we have found actually or i found in the last time the last trip i really really struggled but i didn't the previous two trips and i wondered it's it's going to sound really really silly but i wonder actually i like consistency with my trips I like them to feel the same when we're traveling mm. so like for years and years now well we've always traveled with Virgin and we've always done the same thing um, whether we've left the car there or we've got a taxi that's fine we've always stayed at the Premier Inn um, always used the number one lounge but last time we decided um, we went upper class didn't we we yep. got a really good deal with Miles um, Black Friday offer 
and I have felt the worst I have felt in ages. It ruined the lead up to the trip. It ruined, it sounds so stupid. I flew up a class and I was just on edge the whole time. I just couldn't relax. I felt awful until we got on the monorail afterwards um, to, at the airport. And I wondered if it was because we were doing something different. Mm. That's the only thing I can think of that we were checking in in a different area. Do you know what I mean? Everything was different to what we usually we hadn't, did. We hadn't done it before. No. Um, it was a lovely experience. It was probably one of the best experiences we've had. But because we'd not done it before, it was... Did it bother you? Or were you okay? Mm, I was okay because I knew we'd be looked after. But I, I just That's felt... the way I feel. But I, I didn't know what to expect. I, I think... just couldn't relax. I felt sick. I just had that feeling. And it's really, really silly. There were actually some, some actually things leading up, actually. And this was another thing. I'm glad we looked at some, some vlogs beforehand. Mm. When you do go to the, the upper class, you can actually drive in. There's a separate check-in area. We had to get a taxi or an Uber from the Premier Inn. Um, and the driver actually said, no, I can't take you there. And we had to convince him that you could drop. A, we could be dropped off there. That we were allowed to go. That we're there. allowed to go there, and it was. All, it took some convincing. I mean, it was all fine, but if we hadn't have watched that, we'd have just been left somewhere. I mean, yes, you can check in in the normal terminal as well, but we wanted experiences because who knows the next time we may actually ever do travel upper class again. I don't know. But that's, that's one of your points you added actually was to familiarise yourself before you go somewhere especially if it's somewhere new obviously yeah and I think we do this a lot of the time we do try to, to familiarise ourselves as much so if you're staying at a hotel the night before check to see maybe not only what food they serve but when they serve it until the times yeah familiarise yourself and I think that really does does help for example you don't want to yeah. get to a hotel and realise you can't eat and then find, well, what do we do? Or if you've got a picky eater in your family mm. and you find that actually there's nothing on the menu they like. The other thing as well is getting yourself to the airport the next day, um, find out about buses, um, Ubers, that kind of thing. Watch vlogs as well. If you're staying at a hotel, um, try and find some vlogs on it. Mm. Um, again, to familiarise yourself so you know what to expect. And also it could be, so I'm just cutting you off just talking about Ubers, it was something when your family in October, we never realised this, but in the Premier Inn, there's actually a phone there that you can actually call a taxi company. In the lobby. In the lobby. So, for example, none of them are great with technology, mm -hmm. and they just wanted all of them to go together. And so you, we found there was a phone there, called up and booked a taxi for the next day. Which was the same price as Which Uber Which was the same price as anyway. Uber. So for them, that was perfect. They could pay, and it was done. I know that may sound daft, it, it was a big be... deal to my mum though. My mum was really anxious about it. She was really struggling. She we, was worried. We weren't going to be there. And the fact that if they've never used the Uber app before mm. and none of them are people that are kind of used to to that, are they? Yeah. And I think I'm sure they're not alone. So it was nice things like that. And, and I'm sure most hotels will book you a taxi as well. Do you know, that's something actually I didn't put on the list, but speak to people. If you're really worried about something, speak to somebody, because that's the only reason we found out about the taxi, actually. I spoke to a member yeah. of the Premier Inn staff and sort of asked about, ta is there a taxi company they use? You know, my family are really worried about trying to get an Uber in the morning. And it was her that helped us. But again, I felt so crappy on the flight last time. I let the staff know that I was really anxious and really, and I, I kept feeling really emotional with it as well and you just don't want people to think oh she's a bit strange because I am a bit strange to be honest a lot of the time but I just, I just talking. <laughs> I just let let the person that was kind of like working around us let her know that I was just really really feeling anxious and I think that lifted me made me feel a little bit better hmm. as well so if okay. you are worried about something speak to somebody yeah yeah I mean I think people we've never had any bad experiences have we really what? with anything with people helping us no so um yeah and again i think that comes down to the familiarizing and planning and also not leaving it till the last moment yeah hello poppy hello poppy she got a bed in here yeah and the other thing we've written down is by familiarizing yourself planning things it limits the surprises on the day, which you nobody wants a nasty surprise. And again, it's almost like you know that part, you've got that planned. Um, mm. In the reverse, I know they don't do it at the moment, but when Virgin used to do the check-in at, at Disney Springs. Twilight, oh yes. Uh, this is the reverse uh, part, that made yeah. our days on the way home. And I'm sure many others that have flown with Virgin, the same thing. Again, it's not a huge thing, but it's that's... the same as Twilight check-in. the same as Twilight check-in yeah. they used to do. 
is the fact if you notice one one thing that that you don't have to worry about after you drop your bags off you can then if your flight's not till the evening you've got the day so mm. yeah it's, it's little things like that i think the key thing we're driving at here is the fact of breaking things down and actually seeing when they are broken down they're not actually significant things are they no they can be dealt with mm. so they're manageable the other thing I find as well is when we get to the Premier Inn, we always have a drink. And the same with the aircraft as well. Have a drink in the morning, even though it might be eight o'clock in the morning, I still have a mimosa. And I just find that takes the edge off it. I know not everybody can do that. Um, but for me, having a drink really helps. Whiskey and, normally. Yeah, you, <laughs> it just takes the edge off it. I'm not talking getting bladdered, but just having a drink, one or two drinks does really help yep. us. And it gives you a little bit of a cloudy effect, doesn't it? Blur it a little bit. I think so. We've we've kind of got to the airport, haven't we? And I think then, I think, think security is worth talking about because oh, I think I security. You're not the one who has to take everything through. I just think you like getting a bit of a fondle. That's no, not that. Because you do it in that, all the no, parks as well. No, it's, it's, just likes a frisk. No, it's 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 the case because of everything we've got. The amount of times, and actually, actual fact, saying that, going out last time. Oh, actual fact, I forgot a bottle, didn't I? Did you? Mm. Ah. I, I, had a, I had a bottle of Fanta. <laughs> You'd given it to me in the taxi, and I'd forgotten I'd kept it in my ah. bag, and they had to check. It was all okay, but I completely forgot. It's, um, I often get stopped these days as well. I have a, a Barocca tube full of quarters that we've just collected over the years, and... Um, they just can't see what it is. Yeah. So it always so I keep that now near the top. So that's another thing actually. If you've got something that you know will set off the security, I know now that they get confused by that. So I actually put that separate yeah. on the tray, my little tube of Baroque quarters, and they can instantly see what it is. Yeah, and you say that's coins. Um for thing, the toll road, thing by for the way. us <laughs> in our my hand luggage, which has all the tech in it, is the fact there's a lot of cables and I think the amount of times I've been asked of do you record, do you do this, do you do that and yes and it's all okay but it is just that feeling that uh, are you going to be stopped. Um, again it's not a major issue, it's good that things have been stopped. And they're always friendly in London we find, not yeah. so friendly in Orlando. No. <laughs> <laughs> but London they're always lovely and they have a bit of a chat and it is actually it's not scary to be honest we've got nothing to be no and we know there's nothing we're taking we shouldn't be yeah um, and we would prefer it that way because obviously it's safer for us to uh, travel exactly yeah so so that for me security I know it's not something but it is just something you just feel because it's security you kind of have this feeling in yourself that you are doing something wrong but you're not do you find as well once you've got through there and you've walked away and you're in that lounge yeah it's like a huge sigh of relief yep. isn't it? It, it it is yeah uh, i mean we're, we're moving on you mentioned the lounge there um we actually get the lounge through my bank we get the number one lounge now it's not the the best of lounges but i mean we've not really experienced many but it's just a nice escape it's somewhere that you know you're going to get a seat because you have to book it beforehand. Mm -hmm. So you actually have reserved. So we uh, we pay £6 each to reserve it yep. through your bank account. We could go and pay nothing, but it gets really busy and they often have signs up it's saying full. It's been busier the last few times, yeah. hasn't so it? So we always have a reserved space and that costs us £6 each. Yes, yeah, so, but that's almost like your own little sanctuary before getting being called to the plane. So if you've got an hour to kill there two hours it's great yes you've got food and drink um it's, it's okay isn't it it's not like it's uh like some of the lounges you see but it yeah. does the job but it is nice just having that space there's also if you want to there's showers aren't there and there's mm. toilets and, and and everything you've got everything you need there's spa treatments if you want to we were um, talking about it beforehand and we were sort of saying because i think it's something like 42 pounds or something like that to book i don't know something like that and if you go thinking 40 quid, that's a lot for breakfast because it's like, you know, it's not, there's not masses of choice there. If and drinks as well. Are yeah, included. there are drinks. I do like my couple of mimosas. Um, that is a lot of money if that's what you think you're getting for your money. If you think of it, we are, or I really, really struggle being around lots of people. It really sets me off and I just sort of get panicked, don't I? That I just have to get out. And I would struggle to be in a big departure hall that's full of people for a couple of hours. So for us, it is worth it just to sit there and have peace and quiet. We can chat. 
yeah have a bite to eat a couple of drinks that for us is worth it yeah it, it's a bit like imagine the parks on the manic and if mm. you've watched our videos we like finding the quiet spaces and it's a bit similar to that and again it's another thing that we've broken down and we've kind of separated out that helps our helps our trip yeah the big thing actually that we haven't spoken about which for me has made the biggest difference in how we travel is collecting miles we okay yeah it was a friend of mine that um it was actually through the dib it's um a like a planning place for trips. Online, uh, community isn't yeah. It? So, yeah um which Forward. i joined in 2012 just before our trip and i made a friendship group on there and one of the girls in particular was really really hot on traveling on collecting miles and it was through her that i'd never heard of it before and we started collecting miles the last time we travelled long haul in economy was 2016 to New York. We always used to book the extra leg room mm. seats. I think it was like £30 each then. Um, we used to pay back then. But since then, since 2017, we've always travelled in premium, haven't we? Yep. And because of the miles that we're collecting, I think it's cost... It used to cost just under 500 It's now, I think the last time was 539 and because we're using our credit card, we always get one lot of free miles as well. So it's just okay. miles for one of us and we pay, like I say, about 500. Companion, yeah. companion flight they call it now, don't they? Yeah, yeah it used to be upgrades. Then yeah, now. it used to be upgrades and now yeah. it's companion. So essentially you buy one, get one free, don't you? But it, you, it's still working out cheaper than we used to pay about £800 each in economy, didn't yep. we? So it's still working out cheaper. But for us, that's what's made the difference where we, we still allow loads of time going to check in. But we've never once had to queue, have we? It might be one person in front of us. But for me, that anxiety of not going to a check-in hall and just seeing a crowd. I used to work at check-in. I know how that is when you walk into check-in and it's full. Um, and we haven't had to experience that since travelling in premium. No. Um, just then, we know that when we get to the gate, you've always got your separate queue to go in. And then you're always on board first. You get given a glass of Prosecco first. It sounds really silly, but those things have really, really helped me over the years. I think you don't feel rushed. Mm. There doesn't feel a panic. Yeah. I'm not saying travelling in other classes you would do. But it just for us, it is something that has really, really helped. And of course, it hasn't cost us. It's cost us less. <laughs> it actually saves us money, I would say. Would you yeah. say that's right? Well, yeah, and definitely. We wouldn't be able now, to. Now, of course, we're in a fortunate situation that we obviously can collect the miles. I mean, anyone can collect the miles. And there's other ways you can do that by using Shops Away and other things. I mean, but obviously with running your business, obviously you do pay for pretty much everything through that. Yeah. So obviously that does really help. I know not everyone's going to have that situation. So to collect the miles is probably maybe a bit easier for us than it would mm -hmm. be for maybe others. Uh, everyone's different. It could be there are other people. It's a lot easier to, to collect. Mm -hmm. um, so, but for us, it works perfectly. And also, why wouldn't we want to travel in something that makes us feel less anxious. It just helps so much. And I, I was saying earlier on to Aid that used to be, again, it's that people thing for me. I, to just put it so you understand, I even struggle to go to like a big supermarket, don't I? I've dumped my stuff in Tesco's before and had to leave. So being on a plane and then just being sort of around so much noise and so many people, I think that really sets me off I as well. I think you're, I mean, I know I'm a, a person that has, is an anxious person, but I think you are more so. Mm. Would you agree with that? Especially with I people. I think there's a lot of things, aren't there? If you're somewhere, we've done it before when we've been in a park. I'm not sure if we've vlogged this, but <laughs> we've had to get out. I don't we, usually we, vlog those we, we have actually, we've actually left. You don't see some of those parks, <laughs> but it's a case of why, why are we here still? type yeah. of thing and it is that it's the fact of it can't get be, out. It, it can't be managed and that's another reason why we do try to find the quiet spots it's not just because we're trying to show something for the vlog it is somewhere we do actually need and something we do need to it's do my coping mechanism it, it is it really is <laughs> but being like again on the aircraft um i like the back row of premium because i've got no one behind me and i just feel Someone doesn't, though. I know, because it's all the staff, the crew always puts stuff up in the overhead locker. It's either buggies or whatever else is put there, so you don't have the space for the. But your I just own feel that anyway. our little space. I don't usually get up out of my space, but I don't need to see anybody, and that's me for the trip. And I'm not afraid of flying. It's I don't know what it is. 
Mm. It's I just like to stay there in my little space and not see loads of people. Mm. Whereas you're up and down the whole time, no, aren't I'm you? Not. Yes, you are. I'm not. You don't sit still for two minutes. I do. You don't. <laughs> but for me, that yeah, really, really know, helps. The reason why I do go, because you always ask me to get things. I don't, because I have everything I need in my, my little space. I'm going to come back with crisps. Yeah, you can get me treats. biscuits. <laughs> we get some of this. You don't you get love it. all that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even generally go to the loo on the flight. It's really... I, I wait and go in the baggage hall in Orlando, where it's nice and clean, because that bothers me as well. I have tried, didn't I? And then I struggled with the door lock. And then... I, I think I went last time and you had to wait outside the door yeah, I waited for me. Outside. You did go last time, yes. Yeah. yeah, I just panic. It's just everything, it sounds Again, really silly. you don't silly. need to panic about it. I know. I know. But I that's, do. But, yeah, but you do, you automatically do. But it's the same with everything, isn't it? It is, though. I know. Do you admit that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, rescue remedy, by the way. A lot of people, it's a back flower remedy. A lot of people swear by it. I know our son uses it and really help, finds it helps. I haven't found it's helped me. Maybe it's not strong enough. It's alcohol based. I think alcohol does it though, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but try back flower remedy as well to try and calm. Yeah, they you. do it in a spray. I think they do lozenges as well and things like that. So yeah, the other thing as well, actually, I was going to say, have things that comfort you. So I always wear like cozy clothes. I take like a cozy hoodie. I wear a long dress, and I have my blanket as well. I take my own blanket. I've had it for years. It's actually a fat face scarf, but mm. it's massive and I'm only little, and I find having my own things around me like that really helps as well. I think also, again, depends on the situation, but because we generally take a lot of stuff with us, it's, I've had it before when I thought, oh, where have I put that? I might need my headphones or I might need this. So we, again, try to be organized so we have everything we need for the flight in an actual, just a particular part of your bag, mm -hmm. a front pocket or something. And so when we get on, we might get that out. There might be some sweets we've got. Oh, also another thing we were going to say is that when we do actually get to the airport and through security, we do always get a drink, a bottle of water, a bottle of Sprite or a bottle of Coke. We get one each. It's not necessarily for the flight because obviously there's drinks throughout. It's when we arrive at the other end and it could be you're caught in immigration or caught in baggage hall or it's taken ages for the car hire or even could be driving to your resort and you're caught in traffic. The last thing you want to do, if you're really thirsty after getting off a, off a flight, of thinking, I need to have a drink. Um, it's planning for every eventuality. It, That's what we and do. Then, and again, some people think, well, we're just going really over the top here. You don't need to it do that. It helps us. But it does help us. The amount of times we've got and got to the car and thought, I'm so thirsty. And we've got a drink. So they're little things. And we have been stuck in immigration for a couple of hours. And when it's warm and you've got kids with you... Um, have snacks on you as well that can help especially if you've got kids we're also going to say how we what were you going to say, say something or you do what louis does when we've been on the flight oh and drinks it all and actually drinks in about the first 10 minutes and they've got free drinks anyway <laughs> in fact i say no so that oh. we also uh, do it for the night flight coming home yeah, because so although we, don't we can get drinks i think your sister had this didn't she that she yes. was trying to get drinks but because it was the night flight obviously you can call people to come but sometimes it might take a little while. And I think we'd even said to them, just get get a drink before you get on the plane. Yeah, we always um, do it in, we the, always do, so. in the lounge. Yeah, go on, you were going to say something um, to cut you off. Medication as well. We have everything like that. If you, Because again, like I said, find out what triggers you. If your big thing is the thought of your luggage not arriving, it could be that's happened to you before and now that's a real big sort of anxiety of yours. It's not something that bothers me, thankfully. Um that have things with you. I've always got I've always got the most important things. If my luggage were to go missing, I know I've got my makeup on me and I know I've got like loads of headache tablets and things like that. Um, you've always got like all your contact lenses. Yeah, I, I generally put, and I think we did a post about this, or it might have been on a video and someone thanked us because they never even thought about making sure they'd got things like their medication. And I mean, I'm not talking about serious medication, but things like maybe headache tablets or anything else you might need, any creams or, or whatever um, that you get prescribed. Um, Just in case contact, your luggage does Contact get lenses. Uh, I always actually have a change of clothes in mine as, uh, as well, and a pair of flip-flops. Why? Well, it's warm when we get there. <laughs> Holiday mode. <laughs> sunglasses we have oh that's, no, that is, that's another thing i have my and do you know this is oh, your prescription though aren't you this is something that really bugs me is What's the fact that? of when you're a glasses wearer um 
I obviously, one, contact lenses. I know not everyone wears them, but I wear contact lenses. So obviously, I have my contact lenses. But then also, if I've got my contact lenses, I've got to have normal sunglasses as well. But if I'm not wearing them, I've got to have my prescription sunglasses. And I've also then got to have my glasses. But also, I take a spare pair of glasses. Because <laughs> if your glasses wear, like me, I have to have them. I cannot not wear them. I literally will not be able to see. That then means I've got at least, what is it, four pairs four pairs of glasses. And you think of hand luggage. Like some people might take a small rucksack or things like that. I've got four glasses cases that need to go in somewhere. It's just all space that just... Does that make you feel anxious? Well, no, but, but it it's just... it's not part of the video then. Well, <laughs> I was joking. Well, it does because <laughs> when I've got everything else to try and take, I just feel whenever I've left, I thought, am I going to get stopped because I've got so much stuff with me? Mm. It's just a case if it fills my bag. <laughs> anyway, that's me just... You had a little rant about glasses, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't have these things to work. Well, you do actually now. I just don't wear my glasses. So. <laughs> um, right, so we're at the airport. We've got our things. And I thought, we were, I thought we, well, which side of the airport are we now? We're we on the other side, yeah. Ah. Yeah, so now go to the car hire. Again, plan for every eventuality. Make sure there's no surprises. Um, let's talk about, oh, what were you oh, going to say? There was something, there's something you do as well. You have a folder with all your paperwork in. Now, I know you can have things on the phone now and everything like that, so if that's the way you do them, that's great. But you actually have a folder that is in the front of your bag, and you actually have it in order, don't you? So you actually have, it might be Premier Inn. Um, Esther. Esther, do you know what I mean? But when you get to the other side, you will then have the car hire. The car hire. So you've got everything ready, so you can get that out if need be. You've got it's it there also, ready to go. I know you've got your phone, but if you were to lose your phone or your phone were to die or just everything, I still like a paper copy. I'm using them less and less now. I have to say, you used um, to take a, used to be a whole wad of. But we needed them in those days. You'd get yeah. to check in and you'd hand over your um, yeah confirmation. Well, that would be like checking for hotels as well, yeah. wasn't it? And if we were staying in five or six different places, maybe on a road trip. I do print off a lot less these days. I don't, like if we were staying on Disney, I wouldn't print Disney because no. I know it's on the app and yeah. I know that the staff there will help you. But I do still print off car hire. I do still print off my Esther. I still print off our, um, been printing off our vaccinations. Mm. Um, hopefully they won't be needed for too much longer. I don't um, think they are. I know, it sounded very positive, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but things like that I do print off. I also have um, like our um, medical insurance, our travel insurance. Yeah. I have all that printed. Just so if anything happens, um, I, know, I know exactly where the information is. Because sometimes as well when you're panicked in a situation, you, like you imagine like you need your medical information, mm. your travel insurance. Um, you might think, oh gosh, where do I find that? I know I've got it printed with the number. In my folder um, so again it's just planning for every eventuality just want to talk about that I spoke about prescription medication a short while ago make sure you have a repeat prescription with you or a letter mm. from your doctors um, because if you've got say for example creams or anything like that that you do need um, you are actually able to take them and they don't they're not included as part of your allowance for your liquids you need to take but they might ask for proof. So either a letter from your doctor or your prescription to show what it is. But also, I always take them with me and also touch on the glasses. Mm. I always have a copy of my prescription for my glasses that if ever something were to happen, like I lose my glasses. That would be awful. Well, it happened, didn't it? I know it did. Um, but if you've got your prescription, you could always get another pair. Or with a medication, if you've either run out or you need something or it's been lost, you've got it with you. Should we touch on parks? Because we... Yeah, I think so. Again, it varies with me. Sometimes I'm absolutely fine. Sometimes, like in Magic Kingdom, it's or Epcot, I've had real bad things where I've just got to get out. It just feels so overwhelming. Mm. Um, we do break up our days. We are people to get in the park early, and then have a rest in the afternoon when it's busier, and then we go back to the parks later in the day. That really helps. Even if it's a 15 minute snooze, don't we? Yep. Um, and we like our quiet spaces like we've touched on just now. Yeah, I, th I think for us that's a really, really big part. And also I think sometimes it's if you're not like that and don't need that, that's great. Again, everyone is different. But it could also be you start to feel a little bit overwhelmed. Or it could be if you're in a group of people and you start to kind of get a bit... Um, what's the word I'm thinking of? 
not arguing with others, but mm. on edge you just with need others. Your space. And sometimes you do need space as well. And sometimes it's good just keep that communication going. Um, again, people are affected differently. If it's your first trip and you're in the heat, that can really mm. take it out of you, and that can really affect you. So although you're somewhere, and it could be that trip of a lifetime, to take five sometimes. You do need just to take that step back because although it that may be your only time, you also want to enjoy it as well. Mm. We've seen so many times where we've seen either families or you've seen kids and you can see they've just been literally dragging them around. Well, not literally dragging them, but you know what I mean? Lots they're of at, tears and they're arguments. They're so tired. They've had the early mornings. They've had the late nights with fireworks or things like that. You can see they're exhausted. But adults, the same thing can happen. So make mm. sure, give yourself that time to rest. Um, people do it in different ways. Sometimes water parks are their rest days. Yeah, for them. my family, that's what they enjoy. If you do rope drop to close, fine, not a problem. You might have a perfect way it works for you. Again, everyone's different. Everyone's different. But listen to yourself. If you find things becoming overwhelming, just say to, say to yourself, why is it overwhelming? And try and do something about it. If it means finding 10 minutes somewhere really quiet, do so we've had some really fun days in magic kingdom it might be so so busy but we've actually gone and got the raft over to tom sawyer island and we've spent a couple of hours there we've taken snacks and a drink um we've seen the parade go past yep. and it's been so nice and then i don't know it just rejuvenates you doesn't it yeah um, it does or, yeah even if it's a really busy day, go on Carousel of Progress, break up the day, go into Fill Our Magic, the t Tiki Birds. Well, that's what I was going to say. Your downtime doesn't have to necessarily even be finding a quiet space, going into some of the the, the shows mm. um, in a nice air-conditioned room. Break up the day. It can actually, and I know there's probably other people that have probably done the same thing, where they've actually fallen asleep whilst in them, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, I've done that a few times. <laughs> it just becomes very relaxing, doesn't it? Yeah. Or head out to a resort. If it's yeah. really, really busy, go and take yourself off to a resort. Everyone can visit a resort, yeah. even if, if you're, on, you're not staying on site. If you're on property already, if you're, say, for example, at Magic Kingdom, you've got the monorail, you can walk now to Grand Floridian. Yeah. Um, it, it's if it's a if it's not such a hot day. If it's not such hot. Well, even if it's down to you. It depends if you like the the heat, isn't yeah, it? That's but true. <laughs> but if you're somewhere, go and grab the, get get the boat somewhere. Um, just go to a resort. Often you'll find it, it's for us. That's that's a perfect thing. Also, it's somewhere different. Yeah, it really, and it does rejuvenate you. I can promise you that. Um, just looking at the list there. I is there much done. else? Oh. The thing we said is look at ways to make your experience easier. So for us, that's obviously using miles. It could be for you paying a little bit extra pre-booking a seat. The other thing which we have done for years is before we travelled in premium, we used to always pay prepay to bring an extra bag home. That's We've right, always yeah. packed and we still do it now. We pack a suitcase inside a suitcase. Yep. And so we can bring an extra bag home. We get, we're lucky with traveling in premium, you get two. In economy, you get one. When we used to travel in, in economy, we would pre-book with Virgin, wouldn't we, for yes. that extra case. So for us, it used to make us feel really anxious, didn't it, years ago? Will we fit everything into the, into the luggage? Because obviously you'd always buy a few bits and pieces. Um, so for us, that helped, didn't it? Yep. Yeah, so it's those little things. You kind of work out the whole scheme of things. Um, again, it could be though you've travelled really light and you've kind of only packed your case half full or something on the yeah. way out. So it could be, it's fine. But for us, that really worked. I think it used to be fifty dollars for an extra case. Mm. So for us, that's probably a lot more now. <laughs> that peace of mind for that was just so so easy for us. Again, it's breaking it down. Look at what makes it easier. Look at what maybe bothers you, and see what you can do to change it. It's prepaying as well. It works out cheaper to do it in advance than on the day, just to let you know. Um, but yeah, sometimes you need to spend a little bit more money to actually help your day, like with using the lounge or pre-booking seats, things like that. If it's something that really, really helps you, have a look at how much of an impact that can have on your day. I think also that can change as well, because if you think of the lounge, we know when we've had earlier flights, the airport can be quite empty. Mm. The moment you get that m sort of later morning, sort of like from eight, nine o'clock yeah, onwards, I say, well, say later morning, eight, nine o'clock onwards, the airport can get very busy. Certain times of the year. Certain time of the year. And mm. I've heard people even trying to get food in the, the normal mm. departure sort of area 
it's just absolutely crazy. The times yeah. they've spent trying to get food has been... I was like, um, Maisie and I went for a walk in June, didn't we? Because Maisie hadn't travelled before, just to have a look at the departure hall. And so we left the lounge. I could not believe how busy it was. Just the queues for everything. It was just crazy. Yeah. So I think, yeah, as a summary, just try to break things down. I think try to limit surprises as well. Um, again, if you haven't been before just the planning because obviously you're not going to know necessarily what to expect but the planning ask questions mm. watch vlogs ask people on instagram that have traveled ask advice um ask us i mean it's mm -hmm. the fact of we're here to to help as well we're fortunate enough that we have traveled sort of enough times and done this so and people do ask us um there's no question that's a silly question well who knows? <laughs> no, but no, in all seriousness, no question is a silly question. If there's something that you're thinking about, it can just be that peace of mind. Yeah. We still do it as well. Yeah. But, and we still feel anxious sometimes. Oh, there's one more tip I was going to say. You yeah. started to talk about car hire. Yeah. I think you started on something else. Going to reverse back to car hire. Yeah. When you get to car hire, um, not everyone is able to use their mobile phone in regards to mm. their their actual normal contracts. They might not have roaming, or if they do, they will have to pay for it. So please check with your carrier. Mine, I have mine included as global roaming, so I don't pay any more. That's one point. But the other point is, is on Google Maps, you can actually download the maps as an offline version. Now, this was a tip from Lee and Nick, um, the Lodge guys that they've actually done a video on it, and I think they did a video on it, about mm. using Google Maps when overseas. And you can download Google Maps as an offline map. So when you get to the parking lot at the car hire in Orlando, it's in a great big concrete car park. You have no signal. If this is the first time you've been it's there. really scary. That can be quite daunting. <laughs> or if you've got, sat, if you've got sat nav, we've taken sat navs when you yeah. used to use sat navs, and they wouldn't pick anything up where you were. Because, and you literally drive out the car park and you're on the road. Yeah, exactly. But with the offline maps, now of course you won't get live traffic, but you will have, of course, the most up to date roads that are on Google. And of course, they will automatically update when you connect to Wi Fi. So there have been changes. I mean, I doubt they will watch on holiday, but yeah, that's another big, big tip. And that one's from Lee and Nick. So um, we do that all the time now on both our phones. We've downloaded the whole Orlando area just before we, we leave. And so that is just another thing that really, really does help. Anyway, we hope this yes. has helped you. Let us know if it has. We'd love to hear from you, hear what sort of makes you feel anxious and what you do. And like I said, hopefully it will help other people sort of reading your comments mm. too. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.